Young Michael Jordan loved sports, but believe it or not, he actually failed to make his high school basketball team as a freshman and a sophomore. Clifton Pop Herring is the man who cut Michael Jordan, by the way, and there's a lesson in that for you, Valuetainers. One, never give up. Just because something's not going well right now doesn't mean you will not one day be great at it. And number two, you will never make as big a buffoon decision in your life as Pop Herring did when he went on to cut the greatest basketball player of all time. Regardless of that buffoonery and undeterred, Jordan continued to practice and made the team the following year. After high school, he accepted a basketball scholarship to the University of North Carolina, where he played under legendary head coach Dean Smith. In Jordan's first season in North Carolina, he was named the ACC Rookie of the Year. The Tar Heels won the ACC championship and Jordan made the clutch jump shot that beat Georgetown University for the NCAA championship. For my fellow Nick fans out there, this would kick off the first of 20 straight years of Ewing losing to Jordan in the clutch. Dagger. Jordan would go on to lead the ACC in scoring as a sophomore and as a junior. The Sporting News named him the College Player of the Year both times. And just five years after being cut from high school, Michael Jordan was selected as the third pick of the 1984 draft by the Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. Sorry, Pop. You did cut Jordan, but there were two other teams that drafted somebody not named Michael Jordan. What is happening here? What type of decision making was going on in the early 80s? Stop it. Get some help. Prior to actually joining the Bulls, Jordan was a member of the Summer 84 United States Olympic basketball team that won the gold medal in Los Angeles, California. The first of three gold medals for Michael Jordan. When Jordan was drafted by the Chicago Bulls, they were actually a losing team, drawing only around 6,000 fans to home games. Jordan quickly turned that around, both with his flamboyant style of play and fierce spirit of competition. Jordan's incredible leaping ability and hang time thrilled fans and arenas around the league. In his first season, he was named to the All-Star team and was later honored as the league's Rookie of the Year. A broken foot would sideline Jordan for 64 games in his sophomore season, but he returned to score 49 points against the Boston Celtics in the first game of the playoffs and 63 in the second game, an NBA playoff record at the time. The 86-87 season was again one of individual successes and Jordan started in the All-Star game after receiving a record million and a half votes. He became the first player since Wilt Chamberlain to score 3,000 points in a single season. And Jordan did it without being half a foot taller than everybody else in the league. In 88, Jordan concentrated on becoming a more complete player. This added attention to defense culminated with him being named Defensive Player of the Year. He was also named the league's MVP, becoming the first player in league history to lead the league in both scoring and steals. He was again named MVP in that year's All-Star Game. By adding players like Scottie Pippen, Bill Cartwright, Horace Grant, and John Paxson around Jordan, the Bulls management created a strong team that won the 1991 NBA title defeating the Los Angeles Lakers. The very next year, the Bulls repeated as NBA champions, beating Clyde Drexler's Portland Trail Blazers. In 92, Jordan also played on the Dream Team, which participated in the Summer Olympic Games in Barcelona, Spain. The Olympic Committee had voted to lift the ban on professional athletes participating in the games. The team easily won the gold medal, winning their eight games by an average margin of 43.7 points. In 1993, after a tough playoff series once again with Patrick Ewing's New York Knicks, the Bulls met the Phoenix Suns for the NBA championship. When it was over, Jordan was again playoff MVP and Chicago had won a third straight title. That summer, Jordan's father, James, was murdered by two men during a robbery attempt. Jordan had won three straight NBA titles, three regular season MVP awards, three playoff MVP titles, seven consecutive scoring titles, and he was a member of the all-star team every year that he was in the league. In just nine seasons, he had become the Bulls' all-time leading scorer. Amidst all that controversy about his gambling debts, Michael Jordan retired from the NBA in 94-95 to pursue a career in professional baseball. Jordan played for the Birmingham Barons, a minor league baseball team in the Chicago White Sox system. Although the 17-month experiment showed that he was not a Major League Baseball player, the experience and time away from basketball provided a much needed rest and opportunity to regain his love of basketball. Sidebar, I actually played some minor league baseball, believe it or not, and Jordan catches a lot of flack for how poorly he played. They threw him directly into double A and he batted over 200. If you take any normal human being and put them into double A without playing baseball since they were 15 years old, they're gonna faint. They're gonna crap themselves at the plate. I would bet 
every dollar that I have against anything that 99.9% .9 of the people in the world could not even make contact with a pitch thrown by a double-A pitcher. This guy, after not playing the game for 15 years, batted 200. You should not give Jordan any flack. If anything, that just goes to show what a supreme, unreal athlete the guy was.